How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? So in this video, I'm going to talk all you need to know about a pen. So a pen is really useful when you are dealing with slice or array. So here, I first to give a very simple example. So let's say I declare、um, a slice for a, and I make the item there as end. So the most basic example here is I can have. A append, for example, integer here. However, you cannot append a string or anything else, since you will say just cannot use the string as a type of int in order to append there. So if we print it out, basically we can see the value for a is three. Okay, great. So next, what I'm going to talk about is what are other kind of scenarios that we can use to append. Since for this case, we just talk about how we're going to append all the stuff here. So let's say we basically got a b, and、uh, we can, for example, declare b as an integer of stuff here. All right. And what if I just want to append the b to the a here, the slice here? If I just put b here, basically you can see the error here. So it it says it cannot append the slice of integer as a type of int, since the expected value here for the append is basically an integer. While here we just have a slice, and that is not allowed. And therefore, the way we can do that is have the triple dot. And、uh, now you can see the arrow disappears, and the value returns to one and two. So this is a kind of、uh, small trick that we can do. So here's the example for the slice. But what if I, for example, I want an array? So let's say here. So I have just three integers here, and you can basically see that. You just can't use a. This is the、uh, array as a type of the slice. So basically, for the keyword append, it only supports the slice type of variable. The reason is because when you use the append here, you are basically changing the length and also the capacity for the slice. However, if you use the array here, since arrays、uh, capacity and length are fixed, then Uh, it just cannot support, and therefore we just can't use the array in the pant. But later I will talk some other cases that I have to use the array.、Uh, now we really talk about this. But what if, for example, I have、uh, more stuff, and what if I want to remove the second item, which is two here in the B? So basically, what I can do is, so first I can just have this and. If you remember, if we have a column just in front of the index, basically is、um, just the, it will only take the value that before it. So let's say、uh, here's the one, then we just take the index zero here, and that is one. And since we put two here, well, if the same column is after index, then basically that is inclusive. Therefore, we will include this、uh, there as well. And so you can see it complains that it cannot use this as a type of int. So that is because for this value basically is a slice of integers for three and four, and therefore in this case, we just use our tricks that I mentioned previously, and it will be very comfortable to transfer this a slice of integers as an integers, and therefore if you see the result here, it's basically one, three, and four, and、uh, not surprisingly, we remove this first item. All right, so these are just some very basic stuff. Now I want to improve a little bit. So you know, in C or C plus plus, this is called a matrix. But、uh, you know, in Golang, there is no concept for matrix, and therefore in this case, it's just a slice of a slice. All right. So here I want to just make it easier, and uh, uh, I want to append, for example, B into A. This should be working since B is just a slice. Of integers and it satisfies the、um, condition for the variable a. And if I print it out, you can see this is basically a slice of slice, and the value for the inside slice is one and two. So here, what if I want to do something different? For example,、um, I just want to have two here, and you can see basically it complains that you cannot use b or a slice of、uh, integer as the array. So what we can do here is we can just add two here. And、uh, you can see the compliance goes goes out. And、uh, if I run it again, basically the same thing. However, even though the output is the same, while、well, the meaning is different, since for the first one or our previous one was actually a slice. However, here inside this is an array. 
So uh, another trick that we can do is sometimes if we really don't know like how many items that we are going to write into you know or define into this array, then probably we can just use triple dots here, and you can see there's no complaint at all. So triple dots is really like kind of magic, and this is actually equivalent to two since the length is two, right? So what if I change here to three, and you can see here's the complaint, right? You just can't use this type of two, array with a length of two as the length of three. All right, so this is another very basic example. I know for most of the time for other people, when they talk to here, they will just stop the video and say, that's it. However, basically there are another very important thing and that also took me a lot of time when I started to learn Go. So here is more about the array and slice. So I think first we need to know what's the difference, right? If you just know, okay, we just put integer there, then that's a array. If not, then that's slice. That's not enough. We have to understand the true meaning for array and slice. So slice is more like a kind of type of strut. The first thing is the pointer. So I just write anything here um, so to just illustrate. So the pointer is basically to point into a specific array and that is the start of the array all right so for example if the slice if i have a slice for example a um, probably i should declare like this the pointer whenever i assign value or something for example if i assign value for the integer of uh, one and two so Basically, the pointer is pointing to the first value in this array. And for example, later, if I want to see like one or two, etc., basically, it's just to move the pointer to uh, other items in the array. So probably this is a little bit difficult to understand, but if you're familiar with C or C++, then this is a very easy point to understand. And the second item is the length. So length is the integer type, and that is how many items already in the slice. And third is capacity. So probably I just put integer of 64 here. So capacity means how many items that you are allowed to store in the slice. Of course, the slice and length can both be changed. Even though like the slice is declared, but it can still be changed in the future. So um, basically this is not a slice, but a slice hider. So slice hider is something that just to define a slice. So inside of array, we just use slice hider to define a slice. Okay, so why I have to spend so much time to illustrate this? Of course, I'm going to talk about reference. So there are actually, pa the passing mechanism actually got two types, right? First is pass by reference, and second is pass by value. So basically when we are dealing with the slice, if we assign something or, or do something, actually let's do by the reference. Since if you remember, the slice is actually pointing to a pointer, right? Okay, so great. So what I want to talk here is like this. So uh, let's say just move it back to slice and I have this, right? So let me first do this. I do something like this, I append B to my A. So if you can see, if there's no surprisingly, just prove this is not magical, right? So this should be one and two, okay, great. However, what if I change, for example, uh, the first value for my B into three? So B now is no longer one and two, but one and three here. And here, if I copy here and uh, to print it out again, so you can see for the first time, the value for A is 1 and 2. However, after change the value for B, this first uh, item here, basically the value changed to 1 and 3. So what's going on here? I didn't do anything with A, right? So if you can recall, basically the reason is because for the slice of A, even though it append a value or a slice more specifically to A, basically is pointing to B here, all right? So whenever I changed any value here, basically the value in the A will change as well. So how can we solve this? In this case, we have to know 
another function, and that is called copy. So copy is helping you to create another field for another value and to pass that value to the pointer for the slice header. So what I'm going to do here is I have to declare another variable, for example, called C. In order to use copy, we have to have, you know, um, to declare a variable first and, uh, for example, to make it as two, since we know there are only two items here. Uh, it's fine, I can delete this part, but for now, just, yeah, to make it more standard. Because in industry level, basically, we will all assign uh, the capacity and length for the, a particular variable here. All right, so I'm going to copy the stuff. So copy has an optional return value, and that is an integer. And this integer means how many items actually return or copied in the destination. But usually we just don't need that, right? We just don't care. If I return it, I can definitely know that's two. And after I copy that, and uh, I just pass the value by C instead of uh, by B, and uh, you can see something like this. And if I run it again, Hopefully both are, yeah, so both are just one and two. Since right now, even though I change the value for slash B, like to change the first uh, index, it actually doesn't affect C at all, since C is another ground of truth and is pointing to another variable. So that is all has been done by the copy. So probably if you don't believe me, saying, okay, you're just cheating here, right? And by the way, I never cheat. If I don't just use copy and uh, to just make C directly pointing to B, you will see the result, which is still like this. Yes. So no matter how many intermediate um, assigning process we do, it's basically still the same, since it's always pointed, right? C will point to B, B will point to, to this. Even though you append C to A here, and you just do anything in B, the C's value will change as well, since C is kind of pointing is pointing to B. So that is all you should know so far for the copy if you want to pass by value. I know usually people just stop you since that's all they need to know. However, since we are always chasing the highest standard for engineering, we have to know like when to use the pants and how to use it. So here I would like to do three benchmarks. So the first is about mm, this kind of declaration. I know this is what people usually do they will just assign or declare the value directly and they will just use a pant uh, bluntly. So that is the first choice. For the second choice here, basically we will declare a variable here at first and to make the length of them as zero and the capacity as what we wish to test here. So this is the second choice. And basically we still use the pant here. So the only difference between the first and second choice is basically the second option here, it assign the length and the capacity for the slice at first. And the third option here is, I would just to declare this variable. Uh, unlike the second choice, basically I would declare both the length and the capacity as one million, which we will test later on. So here, instead of use the keyword append, I just assign the value to the slice directly. So these all three choices or options, they will return the same result since they all assign from zero to just one million minus one. Uh, that's just too loud, I don't want to pronounce that, but just to assign these one million values to this uh, slice and uh, let's see what will happen. So you can see basically the first option takes the longest time. There's no doubt that this is the worst um, choice and this I believe is the choice that most of people use to write. So the reason why this option is the slowest is because when you just declare a slice like this, the GoLang basically doesn't know what are the length and capacity for your slice, and therefore they will just assign zero for this variable. So both the length and capacity are zero. And whenever it appends the value to this uh, slice, basically it has to update the length and capacity in the meantime. And therefore, that will take a lot of time. And there's no doubt why this is the slowest. Well, by comparing the second and third choice, basically, you can see the second choice is better. It's like half time for the third choice. And the goal length is very different from Python. So in Python, if we want to assign a lot of values to array, so uh, in Python, the array is the slice in goal length. And therefore, 
In those cases, if you directly assign this value to this slice in Python, then that would be much faster. If you're interested, you can test that out. However, in Golang, it's a little bit different. So what's the reason? The reason is because when you declare a variable like this, basically you declare the capacity and the length together as 1 million. And that will take some time, since you already got the length of 1 million items, although all of them are zero. However, when you find, right, when you find it, it will still take some time. However, in this scenario, it's totally different, since as we know, this slice is simply the pointer, and it just finds the address for the last pointer value, and it just assign another value after that. So it's just like assignment chain. And in this case, this is much faster. So whenever you write uh, your code, if you want to append a lot of values to a slice, and therefore in the future, when you are going to assign a lot of values to a slice, make sure to use this kind of architecture or structure, since this can help your algorithm to save a lot of time and to make your code much faster. And also, this is the recommended way by Golang community. All right, I think this video can give you an insight for all the detailed usage for the keyword append and uh, what you should pay attention to in the future and also what's the most proper way to use this function. I really appreciate your time and see you next time.